It's the guy who did over 40 years in the army. It's Lloyd Wheaton on today's. Oh my goodness, look at that mustache. It's Lloyd Wheaton and his mustache on today's Motivated Moments in History. <laughs> Lloyd Wheaton was born in Michigan in 1838. Not too much is known about his life prior to the military, but no one cares. Look at that damn facial hair! That's the kind of scrub I want if I was a Civil War commander who thrived on slaves and motherfucking bodies! <laughs> Lloyd entered the Army in 1861 as a first sergeant of the 8th Illinois Infantry, and less than a year later, he was the company commander. Three years after that, he was a freaking full bird. In 1865, April was the month, while he was with other Union units, the Yankees surrounded Fort Blakely near Mobile, Alabama. After a week of fierce fighting, they smashed a fort containing nearly 4,000 Confederate troops. Lloyd led the flank, or the left flank, and was the first to enter the enemy's embrasure despite fierce opposition, bullets, and artillery fire. For these heroics, he was awarded a Medal of Honor. But look at that mustache. I mean, that mustache is probably the coolest facial hair I've ever seen in the military. I mean, this thing could take, I could take it to a sorority party and get everybody pregnant without even touching them. I mean, I can get a dude pregnant with this. Not that I'm into that, but I mean, it's, it's cool if you are, but I just... Anyway, after the Civil War, he left the volunteer militia and entered the regular army as a captain. He was promoted to lieutenant colonel 25 years later and assumed command of the 22nd Infantry. 25 years later. I bet there was like some 30-year-old colonel and Lloyd was like, you know, you better eat balls, douchebag. I was in the army before you were Michael Phelpsing around in your dad's nutsack. I mean, look at this mustache. It is amazing. I mean, this thing is like Doctor Strange meets a biker gang. It's the coolest thing I've seen since Rambo 4 or something. I mean, the dude, dude, I bet you when he was fighting people in the Civil War, they were all like scared of shit. Not because they're about to get slaughtered by the Union, but because they saw this freaking majestic ass face fro. That son of a bitch is like fantasy book level. Something like fantastic mustaches and where to find them. Moving on, he was appointed as Brigadier General during the Spanish-American War and deployed to Cuba as part of the occupation force after Teddy Roosevelt smashed those turds up. During the Philippine campaign, he served alongside Arthur MacArthur, father of the famed General Douglas MacArthur. You know, and Lloyd, he was also the general who authorized the capture of the tyrannical Philippine leader, Emilio Aguinaldo. This dude's stash. I, I'm, I'm sorry, I can't get over it. I bet women were lined up to get with this thing. I mean, they probably didn't care about Lloyd. He was just some torp from Michigan, but they wanted to bone down with his facial hair. I mean, the AR-670-1, you it really ruined it for us, you know? I mean, something like this, I mean, you gotta be born with it. A dude probably popped out of his mother's crotch and the doctor was like, congratulations, you got a hell's angel. I mean, with a stash like that, I bet he was genetically engineered to kill people and you know, be a lumberjack or something. Okay, back to the story. He, he was promoted to Major General and, not, and retired in 1902 after hitting the 64-year-old age limit. He died in 1918. He's buried at Greenwood Cemetery in Rockford, Illinois. And that, kids, is your motivated moments in history! That freaking... Must have. I mean, the AR-670-1 just ruined it. Ruined it. Thank you. <laughs>